Yo, what's good everyone? Natlan's bringing new characters, artifacts and weapons and as a result there's a bunch of units being buffed. Stick around for the whole video because there are some unexpected surprises. Let's get straight into it with Dia, the unit I think most of you are choosing for anniversary. If we're not getting any new black characters in Natlan we'll just use the old ones. I just did a guide for Dia so check that out if you haven't already but to summarise, we get her for free and she's versatile in that you can build her as an on-field damage dealer, an off-field burgeon trigger or a defensive unit who can trigger support sets like Tenacity or Deepwood. She was just buffed by Emily and now with the release of Natlan we have two new 5 stars she can synergize with. She works as an off-field pyro applicator for Mualani's team so she can vape all of her hits as well as having a few uses for Kinnich. Firstly she applies pyro for burning to trigger his passive, next she's a good burgeon trigger for his teams which also triggers his passive. She might actually be favourable to Toma because along with Bennett she gives the pyro resonance to give Kinnich more attack. In your standard burgeon teams that's not usually necessary because you'd use a driver like Nahida or Yao Yao who don't need attack but Kinnich benefits from it. As I mentioned earlier she's a good holder of Deepwood for Kinnich without feeling like you're losing something. Putting it on other units like Shangling, Sing Cho, Yulan or Farina feels like you're gimping their damage. Dia doesn't deal as much off field damage though so she doesn't mind. Next let's look at the current limited 5 star Emily. Honestly she's solid in the current state of the game. I did a video showcasing 11 of her teams and there were even more that I didn't mention like for this abyss cycle I got my 36 6 stars first time using Navia, Emily, Shangling and Bennett. With that not being in my video that would be team 12. Even having all these options she gets even more in Natlan because she synergizes with both Mualani and Kinnich. Mualani wants to vape her hits, Emily wants for things to be on fire too, very French of her. She gets more damage when enemies are burning. Running something like Mualani, Emily, Bennett and a flex will be solid. You could even run your free deer and swap Bennett out for Nahida to give Mualani more elemental mastery. Then there's Kinnich. Emily's a burning off field unit and while she has decent on field pyro units she doesn't have a true dendro on fielder. Kinnich gives her that and with it pushes her ceiling even higher. Candice, one of my favourite designs in the game and she's consistently buffed with several new units. Xianyun gave her a plunge team, Alekino gave her a good team to make use of his C6, Emily provided her with an off field flex for a charge attack teams where you'd use Candice as a budget and hydro version of Hu Tao. With the release of Mualani, Candice gets another team in being able to buff Mualani's normal attacks while also providing the hydro resonance for more HP. Also the Candice plunge team I mentioned is Candice, Farina, Xianyun and a flex. Some people put your in there but it's not optimal with the damage being triggered by normal attacks so you have to plunge normal plunge normal plunge normal. With the introduction of Kachina who we all get for free she can hold scroll of a hero and give both Candice and Farina the full 40% hydro damage bonus. It's nice for Farina because it's likely you have a HP goblet on her so the free 40% hydro damage to make up for it is appreciated. Now when I dropped my Kachina guide last week a lot of people in the comments were talking about how they're excited to run her with their Navia. Together they're going to help send enemies to the afterlife with Malus and Silver. What, too soon? As you probably know by now, Navia's skill gets buffed when you pick up a crystallized shard. Kachina's C1 sucks them in and her skill deals off field geo damage on ticks so along with Navia's burst, you're going to be creating a lot of them. She also provides the geo resonance which is nice, but a massive benefit is that she can hold scroll of a hero. This is going to give 40% geo damage to the team, we love that for Navia, as well as 40% elemental damage to whoever you pair her with, be it Shangling, Yulan or whoever. Kachina's a nice unit to swap Zhongli out for in most double geo Navia teams. Navia is also a fun option for Mualani, yo yo in between them and making use of their front loaded damage. The new craftable claymore which we get for free is good for a toe. It has high base attack, the secondary stats also attack and it gives 32% skill damage after a party member triggers a pyro reaction. If you run into his Shangling and Bennett you're gonna constantly have this buff. Another couple of Geo characters that benefit from Kachina are Albedo and Chiori. Kachina's C4 gives them a defense buff and his skill counts as a Geo construct which means Chiori can drop two dolls instead of just one. There's also a craftable defense sword for those that don't have Cinnabar Spindle. It's still ridiculous we can't obtain old event weapons by the way. Albedo and Chiori seem to have been forgotten about so it's nice to have a genuine reason to bring them out to stretch their legs every now and then. I could technically count Albedo and Chiori as two different characters for the list but I feel like that's cheating 
Hamilton and we're not Nekopi, we don't do that around here so I'll consider them one. While Thorpe's Clam is a nice set on Kokomi for some extra damage, she's a good wearer of the new Scroll of a Hero set in Mono Hydro teams with a flex. Something like Kokomi, Farina, Yolanta and then Fischl is going to give everyone 12% extra elemental damage. You could even consider Kachina a buff with her holding the set to buff Kokomi's damage. Could we maybe even see a Kokomi Hypercarry team? Who would that even be? Kokomi, Kachina, Candice and Yunjin? Maybe Kazua? If any fairy crafters are watching this, drop a comment of how you'd go about it. She also has a new craftable weapon giving her 41% HP as well as some extra normal attack damage. It's essentially a budget version of her signature weapon. If you're currently running her on Prototype Amber and are already satisfied with the healing, potentially wanting more damage, then 5.0 is a good patch for you. Sticking with Hydro Catalyst, Mona also gets buffed with Natlan, which is nice because it's a shame to let a unit with a massive hat go to waste. You can't spell Genshin Impact without hat. In Mulani, she gets another front-loaded damage dealer to buff while also providing a Hydro Resonance. This is useful to Mulani because she scales off HP and not attack. Realistically, there aren't too many Hydro units that would synergize with her because they apply too much Hydro. One of Mona's flaws in not applying enough Hydro in most teams actually becomes a strength with Mulani. She can also hold Scroll of a Hero in teams with room for a flex like Ito teams. Do you remember when everyone pretended Kave was a good unit and had him trending on social media every time a banner was announced without him on it? Yeah, Chef Roos is the genuine version of that and we need a rerun for it ASAP. Natlan gives her a buff through the scroll of a hero set as opposed to running her on Noblesse. Don't get me wrong, Noblesse is nice and a lot of the units you run her with scale off attack anyway, but there are units like Dia that have split scaling. She benefits way more from the extra elemental damage, and the rest of the team do too to be honest. 12% elemental damage is better than 20% attack. Like I said though, we need a rerun to pull her away from the grasp of Malus and Silver. Okay, that's the last one, I promise. Farazan is yet another character buffed by the artifact set. Arguably her best team right now is Xiao, Farazan, Farina and Xian Yun. In this team, Xian Yun holds Viridescent Venera for Farina, and Farazan usually holds Noblesse. Scroll of a Hero is better though because the buff is bigger than the 20% attack Noblesse gives, and Farina doesn't scale off attack anyway. Also, Chaska is confirmed to be an Animo unit and with his not having many Animo on-fielders, is likely she'll be one. I hope that's the case anyway because realistically, Farazan's only good with Xiao and Wanderer. Even then, Wanderer benefits so much from having other elements in his teams that Farazan feels optional. Chaska being able to bring Farazan off the bench would be massive for her. Now, I know what you're all thinking. You know who really needs a buff? Obviously Bennett. No one uses Bennett anymore, he's essentially dead in a ditch with Malus and Silva. Nah, I'm not gonna go there. I said I'd stop, I said I'd stop, so I'm stopping. Bennett already gives a bunch of attack and in teams with another pyro unit he gives even more because of a pyro resonance. This kind of makes Noblesse feel like a bit of a waste. Scroll of a hero will be more useful. Let's say you're running Child National. You often activate Child's skill to apply Hydro, immediately switch into Bennett's burst to apply Pyro to the enemy, and in doing so you've triggered Vape. This now gives Child 12% Hydro damage and Shangling 12% Pyro damage before you even switch into Kazuha and do all of his leaf shit. So that was at least 10 units getting buffed in that land. Drop a comment if I missed any because not only do I read all my comments but I try to reply to them all too. Check out my recent guides on how to build your free Dia and Kachina, as well as Muolani or Kenich if you go for them and take it easy.